Um, so as was mentioned, my name is Daniel Imberman. I'm really excited to give this talk. Um, uh, for visual reference, I am a white male with uh, large square glasses, and I have a shaved head with a uh, slight beard. And yeah, this is Apache Airflow and Ray uh, orchestrating ML at scale. So to start out with a little bit of background, uh, as was mentioned, my name is Daniel Imberman. I am a strategy engineer at astronomer.io. I'm a member of the Airflow PMC, and I'm a co-creator of the Kubernetes executor and Kubernetes pod operator. But more important to this talk is actually a little bit of what I did before I started at Airflow. So before I started working on Airflow, I was actually working uh, on building data science platforms at Bloomberg LP, specifically platforms for our data scientists and our ML engineers to build, track, and monitor models. And so I've been obsessed with data science tooling and distributed system for quite a long time. And it's been kind of a personal goal of mine to create a really clean Airflow machine learning story. So let's talk a little bit about the Airflow data science story. The Airflow data science story is essentially that Airflow is the tool that should take you from experiment to production grade model. So you're able to create a simple working model on your local machine and Airflow is what's supposed to allow you, Air, Airflow should allow you to essentially take that to something that runs in production. So things like monitoring and scheduling to make sure that your, uh, that your models are always using fresh data and that you're, they're meeting SLAs and that you're alerted if those SLAs aren't met. Um, to things like connection handling, so that if you're running on a dev database, all you need to do is switch the Airflow instance or switch out the variables, and now that same uh, DAG can run against production data. And of course, as of Airflow 2.0, the addition of a fault tolerant scheduler so that you can retry jobs in case of failures, and you have some assurance that your models will be updated in a timely fashion. So when it comes to actually looking into the Airflow data science story, we should start where most data scientists start most models, which is with a Jupyter notebook. And traditionally, uh, last year's, uh, at last year's Airflow Summit, I discussed a Jupyter, uh, Jupyter to production model, uh, which was essentially to experiment with Jupyter, parameterize with paper mill, and then productionize on Airflow. And for those who don't know, paper mill is a system that allows you to parameterize notebooks through cell tagging. So you can go through the notebook, set a uh, set that you want to inject these parameters at this cell, and then paper mill will actually go in, inject those parameters, and then run the notebook. It executes using a Python API, and it actually stores those notebooks in S3 or GCS so that you can go back and see what happened in those historical runs. So this is all really valuable, but we found that there were just some issues with this approach. Uh, the biggest issue we found was that the entire notebook executes as a single task. So there's a lot lower visibility when you're running notebooks separate from your uh, Airflow instance. So now like, there's no fault tolerance because if something fails in the middle of the notebook, there's no way to... Uh, there's no way to start it back from the middle. You have to start that notebook from the beginning and low visibility because as far as if you're looking just at your Airflow DAG, all you know is that a certain notebook is running. You have no real idea what is in that notebook, uh, which leads me to the next issue, which is that your code is in multiple locations. So if you are iterating and you want to modify a notebook, now you have to either create a new notebook and point to that new notebook, meaning that essentially you have to change your DAG every time you make a change, or you can just change the notebook, but now you're going to have kind of some questions as to why your model suddenly started having different behaviors starting at a point with no real uh, lineage, no real way of knowing why that happened. So kind of creates this trade-off between experimentation and repeatability. So we kind of went back to the drawing board and asked ourselves, what would a next generation of Airflow data science look like? What would it look like past that notebook to parameterize and productionize a, a, a machine learning model using Airflow? And we kind of asked ourselves, well, what is the ideal story? Well, the ideal story is 
that you go from a Jupyter notebook to an Airflow DAG with the minimal amount of code conversion possible. So you just want to change as few lines and as few uh, architectures, and you're ready to go. Uh, we want the ability to move large data sets between tasks. This should be trivially easy, practically magic. You should be able to return a data frame from one task, take in a data frame on the other task, and as far as you know, it works just like you're running a Python functions. Uh, you should be able to request dedicated resources for the compute job, things like GPU, RAM, and CPU. And it should also have kind of some more of the meta, meta necessities for model management, things like registering a model, deploying it, and replicating the results so that you can easily deploy your model, run canary testing against multiple models, and then pick the best one. And that way, by the time your Airflow DAG is done, you have a running model endpoint that your uh, users can then reach. And of course, we want to, this to work at scale. Since this is Airflow, we want to run thousands of tasks at once and have this able to handle that scale. And so this is where uh, Ray comes into the equation. And from their website, Ray is a distributed execution framework that makes it easy to scale your applications and to leverage state-of-the-art machine learning libraries. What that essentially means is that Ray is this really cool Python library where you can set up Ray nodes anywhere, be it on your laptop, on an EC2 VM, on a hardware machine. And all you have to do to switch out where that code is run is just change the IP address that the Ray is connecting to. So you can start out with a local Jupyter notebook running Ray libraries and using all the Ray uh, native integrations with things like XGBoost and TensorFlow. And then all you have to do is change one line of code. And now that code is running on a beefy EC2 VM with like multiple CPUs or GPUs or anything you need. Um, so the setup is super simple. It has multiple options for distributed computation. You can run Dask on Ray, uh, Spark on Ray, and they even have their own distributed data frame called Modin. So even if you're dealing with extremely large distributed data, there are options for you. And it has a really cool library called RayServe, where within the Ray ecosystem, you can natively uh, serve models through the Ray cluster. So now we have this really ideal story of well, we want to take some of the best parts of Airflow and some of the best part of this really cool distributed machine learning framework and bring them together. But we want to do it in a way that feels clean and native and just doesn't take that much work from the data scientist. And so this is where the Taskflow API comes into play. Uh, for those who don't know, the Taskflow API was introduced in Airflow 2.0, and it allows you to convert a Python function into an Airflow task using a single decorator. Um, and what's really great about the, what's been really cool about the Taskflow API is it's the first iteration of being able to pass data between tasks using functional composition. So with the Taskflow API, you can now set custom backends where you can use something like S3 or GCS, and the interim, the, uh, interim data will be stored in one of those object stores and then pulled in by the next value kind of kind of like it automatically. But what if we could add the power of Ray to this? Where essentially we have these, these task decorators that can create automatic airflow tasks, but Ray also uses a decorator called the Ray.remote decorator, where you put that on a Python function, and now that Python function can run in a distributed Ray cluster. And so that's where we are able to introduce, uh, along with any scale, the Ray decorator. It's a one-line decorator. You put it on any Python function, and now you have an Airflow task that will run in Ray, but not only run in Ray, it will actually keep the data local between task runs. And what that means is that essentially Ray has this fantastic object store called the Plasma store that's inside of the actual Ray cluster so that in between tasks, you don't have to move your data to S3. You can have like a multi-gigabyte um, data frame, and the only thing that gets passed between the tasks is a reference. And so it just makes everything so much faster and cleaner. So automatically run your tasks in the Ray cluster. You can dynamically size. Uh, so Ray has the, the Ray API allows for you to determine CPUs, GPUs, a lot of kind of configurations. And again, your intermediate values are automatically stored. So 
that is a could be a massive speed up depending on the size of your data. So this is the top tier ML tooling of Ray with the stability and ecosystem of Airflow. And we are so excited to start popularizing this and getting people to get their hands on it and just start really seeing some cool projects come out of this. Now let's kind of go, let's go through an example of from notebook to production, because that's what we've been trying to talk about this whole time. And it would be great to see how you can get, uh, get through those steps. So we start out with, of course, a Jupyter notebook. And this is actually a pretty common paradigm for creating a Jupyter notebook when doing when using Ray, is a lot of time data scientists will define their functions at the top of the notebook with the ray.remote tag. And then at the bottom, you can just do the dot remote function on that function, and it will run that in Ray with the arguments and return, uh, return values locally or return values by reference that you can then pass to those next pieces. Well, so now you have a working Ray uh, remote uh, notebook. It's able to run on your EC2 VM or on your Kubernetes cluster. And so now we want to make this an Airflow DAG. We just change the decorator. So now it's just Ray task. And we can use the same functional composition we would have used in that notebook to then create a functionally a functional composition that is now just actually defining the dependencies of the Airflow DAG. Uh, once you have this running in Airflow, now you can actually take advantage of a lot of the parameterization uh, functionalities of Airflow, things like uh, Jinja templating, things like Airflow variables, Airflow connections, all these things that can bring that Airflow brings to any Pythonic DAG are now available to you with the power of Ray's distributed computing. And then finally, of course, deploy. Uh, add more tasks around it, parallelize it. You can use Ray has a fantastic tuning library called Ray Tune for tuning your models. Uh, you can set schedules. Uh, you can use Ray Serve to deploy the best models and. Now you have the power of the entire Airflow ecosystem, so you can bring in data from all sorts of different sources and then move that data into your Ray cluster for processing. This next gen uh, opens up a whole series of potential integrations, things like uh, ModelDB for, uh, um, for mo tracking model health, uh, things like being able to have an easier Airflow Dask story. So now, because Dask can run on Ray, you can basically use Dask on Ray and have Dask in your Airflow tasks. Uh, just a lot of really cool possibilities here. So let's dive in a little bit to how it works because this is Airflow Summit. So of course you want to kind of see the nitty gritty of what's going on inside of Airflow. And so we have our Airflow instance, we have our metadata database and we have our Ray cluster. And so when Airflow starts the first task, it sends the ray.remote function, ray uh, runs that task, gets the uh, return value, but it'll store the result and basically alert Airflow the, of the completion and send the object ID. Airflow then stores the object ID in the metadata database using XCOM. And then when the next task runs up, it's able to retrieve that and send that function back to ray where the where ray can actually find in the Plasma store where that data is and then run that function local to that data. Uh, here's a slightly more in-depth chart. Probably one cool thing to point out here is that while Ray has this in-memory object store, it also has spillover. So it's if even if you put more data than Ray can technically hold, Ray will still have the ability to keep the leftover data in S3 so you never actually lose data as long as the Ray cluster is running. So let's talk a little bit about next steps. The big next step we're working on right now is actually checkpointing. And this is uh, probably gonna come out in the next couple of weeks. And the idea is, is that we want the ability to explicitly store intermediate data on external data stores. So a good example of this would be, and this is actually something that the Ray community has been very excited about is the idea of fault tolerance, even if you take down the Ray cluster. So let's say you have a task and that task failed and it failed a day ago. And so that Ray cluster has been taken down, which means that the local plasma store is no longer up. 
Well, tradition like before, you would have to basically start your DAG over to recreate that data set that that failed task would need. But if you can set a checkpoint and guarantee that the output of the previous task always goes into uh, into S3 or GCS, that basically guarantees that you can rerun from that failed task and things will go forward as normal. So we're setting up both explicit checkpointing and automatic checkpointing on failure. So the second an Airflow task fails, uh, you don't have to do anything. We will automatically send it. And as long as the Ray cluster hasn't gone down as well, you will be able to restart from that failed task. Um, this also has some potential for being able to tweak experiments. You can potentially go back to previous DAG runs, take that checkpoint, and then try new versions of the next step with that with that historical data. And so that allows some amount of data, data versioning. Uh, the next thing we're going to be working on is also a race serve decorator. And so we're really excited about this idea of being able to just give a model serving function and automatically just with that same uh, Pythonic, uh, with that same Pythonic system, you can now serve 20 models at once, compare their outputs, and then pick the best one as the golden model and do hyperparameter tuning or model health checks uh, in your Airflow DAX. And so as far as the roadmap goes, uh, we've already released our alpha, which has support for Modin. Uh, we're about to release our beta with checkpointing and also connections to any scale. Uh, we're hoping to have a GA release in Q3 of 2021 and fully tested and supported. And by the end of 2021, we're hoping to have GA running with any scale cloud and basically be able to offer a pretty cool combination of two really interesting uh, open source technologies. Uh, finally, let's talk about how to get the Ray provider. So the, the way that we uh, have this set up is that you can go to registry.astronomer.io, and if you search for Ray, you'll find the Ray provider, but it's also kind of a really cool hub of all sorts of different providers across the Airflow ecosystem. We have like uh, Great Expectations, we have Snowflake, we have AWS, and we're kind of just kind of we're kind of just creating a, a giant bank of example DAGs and documentation and just anything we can do to help you get up and running as quickly as possible. And of course, once you get there, you know you can pip install Airflow Provider Ray. There are a few other small setup steps, but for the most part, you should be able to get up and running pretty quickly with this. Uh, finally, here's our info and. I'd like to thank our friends at both Astronomer and AnyScale for giving us the opportunity to do this really interesting integration. And yeah, thank you all so much for your time. And I really can't wait to hear some feedback and definitely leave issues if you find any. And yeah, I can't wait to see what you all build with this. Thank you.